Olá pessoal, estamos com mais um Nova Talk e agora com um super convidado, Richard Arnold. Até daqui a pouco. <risos> Very well, people. One more international guest here at Nova Talk. Our second international interview. Oh yeah. my! Well, I'm I'm also um, a triple citizen. Yeah. Not just Canada, where I was born, but the United States because my mother was American, and I'm British because my father was British. Really? So I have multiple passports. I also, unfortunately, pay taxes in more than one country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be a citizen of the world. It gives you a different view. Yeah, okay. So, so this Nova Talk is not just, it's really international. Really international. Really Triple international. international. <laughs> we got four countries right here. Four countries. Yeah. Uh, nice. let's, let's start. What your deepest memory of Gene and Rodenberg? Oh my God. Deepest. Okay. Uh, that one, that's the first one. Oh, the first one. <laughs> At the convention in uh, New 69. York in 1972, 72. which was the first Star Trek convention. And, and he was there with Majel, they'd flown in from Los Angeles. I didn't know what a Gene Roddenberry was. I, I was a kid. You know, I, I watched the shows, I didn't read the credits. So when he came into the, um, the suite of the committee, and, and we had been making the bags up for all the guests, uh, I, I didn't know who he was. I knew who Majel was. Nurse Chapel, oh my Nurse God, because yeah. <laughs> this was only three years after the show. So she looked the same, and I know I was kind of gushing over her, you know, oh, you know, Miss, Miss Barrett. And I thought he was Mr. Barrett. I, I just didn't know who he was. <laughs> and I'd taken a bus there from St. Louis. So I was in the bedroom of the suite, lying down, just, <laughs> just getting a couple of minutes of, of sleep. And he came in and sat on the bed next to me and he said, are, are you okay? And I said, oh yeah, I just I came from St. Louis, so I'm a little tired. And we just started talking and then he used the bathroom and he went out. And the next day, as they were starting the convention, they were going to have him talk. And I was really interested to listen yeah. to the man who created Star Trek. And I was backstage getting some water and some ice and some glasses to put on the stage. And I see him come back and I thought, oh, Majel must be coming down too. I was wondering why my Mr. Barrett was there. And they introduced you know, Gene Roddenberry, and out he goes, and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, and afterwards, I was apologizing, and he just thought it was funny. He thought it was funny, and he gave me their address oh. in Los Angeles, and, and said, if you ever have any questions, and I thought, yeah, right. And I wrote some questions, and he answered them. Um, his assistant then was Dorothy Fontana. She was oh, yeah. working with him still at that point, and we started a correspondence back and oh, forth. Wow. And, and I would come out to Los Angeles on trips for conventions. And if he was working at Universal, you know, I would visit him up there. If he was working at Warner Brothers, I would visit him there. And he was always so nice. And it was such a gentle way to start a relationship that eventually ended up with me working with him for 15 years. Oh, my. Yeah. Very, very, yeah. very beautiful history. There, yeah. there is a, a myth, I believe it's a myth, that after Gene passed, when the producers are doing something they believe the genie wasn't going to like so much, they no, put it a veil in... It's true, it's that's... true, yeah. Uh, Dan Madsen, who was the president of the official Star Trek fan club, mm -hmm. when Gene passed, had three busts, little yeah. statues made of Gene, one for the fan club, one for Majel, and one for the production of the show, which they sent to Rick Berman. And they had it in the writer's room, and in a meeting where um, they were talking about something that they knew that Gene would not approve of, he took a handkerchief and tied it around Gene's head and <laughs> turned it so that it was facing the wall. I never believed that and story. And it stayed that way for five years. Yeah, yeah it did. It stayed that way for five years. And Today there Maisel, is a brick wall on the well, <laughs> Maisel found out about it and was very angry. Really? And, and she asked uh, Ernie, who had been Gene's assistant, and I, when we were passing out the Christmas gifts that year, to check and see if it was true. And we saw it sitting there, facing the wall with the bandana. I was like, oh my God. So she said something publicly. She never played the Lux on Troy again. That was really? it. That was oh. it. Rick did not take well to anybody <laughs> criticizing them. Yeah. Really? 
So that, that was a true story, not a myth. True story. No, let, because let me ask you another question, a uh, fun question. Okay. Uh, after Gene Roddenberry, okay, your great uh, the, oh, the guy, my mentor, the yeah. mentor. Yeah. Uh, in the classic series, what was the actor that you are most friend? Not because the, the, the you are more close. Do you have one that for oh it's my oh, the original very close series cast? yeah original series class oh, that you have someone a BFF. That's a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. my best friend uh, Walter Walter <laughs> yeah Walter and I have known each other for over 45 years now and I met George early on uh, I met Nichelle very early on I took a photograph of her that was so good it ended up in a book um, I I knew uh, slowly. Um, Leonard and DeForest Kelly and his wife okay. loved Carolyn um, and Jimmy Doohan, you know, fellow Canadian. We got along great. Uh, the last one that I really got to know was William Shatner. Yeah. And unfortunately, in Hollywood, people get reputations, and his reputation was that he was an asshole. And you know, I unfortunately bought into that. I, I believed it. And it was only during the pre-production of Star Trek V, so 1988, yeah, yeah. that I needed to deal with him because he would call me down to his office and say, here's what I need. That's one of William Shatner's best things. Here's what I need, which meant here's what you are going to do. So he said, here's what I need. I need all the posters from the previous Star Trek movies framed on the walls to get me into the mood for doing Star Trek. And I was like, well, that's a pretty good thing, actually. So I got them framed up and hung in his office. And then he, again, he would call me down and say, you know, how can I get this? Or can you talk to Jimmy Doohan, who's being very difficult about <laughs> working on the film, and he's saying terrible things about me. I don't understand why. And, you know, so anyway, I, I started to get to know him, and I realized that he was a really nice guy. Really nice guy. Oh, my God. And, and if anything, you know, that reputation of being an asshole uh, was something that he let happen because it kept people away from him. <laughs> so I finally said, Bill, you do realize that you know, you have this reputation. He said, yeah, yeah, I know. And he said, well, why don't you deal with it? And he said, well, in Hollywood, if you're accused of something, if you fight it, you're obviously guilty. Oh, and if you don't fight it, you're, you're obviously guilty. guilty. Yeah, yeah. There's no difference. Said, of what the two doing. of them, not fighting it, it's just easier. So, so you are yeah. very close on yeah. Uh, Bill. Bill. Yeah, now I am. Yeah, but yeah. It, it took, unfortunately, many years before I realized what a really, really good guy he is. And he is so generous to people like me, to charities, children's charities mainly, uh, and the to and his show. other actors. Yeah, I do the, I'm not what I thought was wearing it today. Um, his horse show every year, he's raised millions and millions of dollars for children's charities specifically, because he loves children. And I would do anything for him now. You know, I, I think he's one of the most amazing people in the world. And I still run into all the time people saying, oh, yeah, he's an asshole. It's like, no, why do you say no. that? Why do you say that? <laughs> yeah. Because you heard that? Yeah, because he's not. He's not. He's really um, a great guy. Tell us. We know that Patrick is coming back to Star Trek. Right. There is this slice of Some form of Star Trek. There is yeah. this slice of possibility of Bill, baby, popping in. There, there's always possibilities. Yeah. Would this be is very, very say, good. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Good idea. It would be a good idea. Leonard said nobody ever really dies in, in science fiction. So, okay, it's, there's a possibility. But just to get Patrick to come back to do this is the big thing. Yeah, um, and, and trying to figure out how to create this universe around him but not make him work too hard because he's almost 80. I don't, yeah. think, he, I don't think he can do 16 hour days, five days a week anymore. Um, but they'll, you know, they'll work out the best balance to make them happy and him happy, yeah. I'm sure. As to anybody else being brought in, that's going to take more time. Yeah, but until I, they figure out what they're making. I'm dreaming with the possibility of we oh. being able to redo the end of generation. Oh, really? <laughs> redo the yeah. end of generation. Well, no, there were two ends. Oh. Yeah, there I was. saw the other one. You saw yeah, the other one. This one is better. Shot in the back. Yeah, yeah that, no, was, that, that was awful. The audience <laughs> that they tested that with did not like that, so that's why they had to reshoot it. That is yeah. very yeah. bad too. Yeah. There is some yeah. people that say, oh. I don't like that. We are Captain Kirk in these ages punching the guy. He's Captain Kirk. He can punch the guy in these hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, the second ending was the one that Bill wanted. Yeah. yeah. He wanted to be able to sort of look off and say, oh my. 
<laughs> oh my, like George! Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then, oh my, it's a George. So I, that was the way he wanted the character to end. Okay, so, but the first one he didn't like. Uh, I, I have to ask this. Yeah. Oh, sorry, we know each other a long time, but really has um, a problem with Bill and George, or the sin to to promote. No, it's not to promote, <laughs> uh, and it's not Bill. It's 100% George. Yeah. And poor Bill doesn't know what to do about it. And, and we've all said, there's nothing you can do about it. It gets attention for George, yeah, yeah, yeah. George loves. Uh, and it's, it's this little craziness that George has where he believes that because Bill stepped on his line, uh, spoke while he was finishing, so they couldn't edit it, um, in Star Trek II where he thought he was going to be getting his own ship or was saying that and Bill stepped on his line, uh, they cut it. So he did not get his promotion and <laughs> in the movie and George felt that Bill kept him from getting a promotion. It's like, but it's not real, George. There is no Starfleet. <laughs> you know, he didn't stop getting that promotion, right? Are you sure? But yes, <laughs> he held that against him for years. But, but it would yeah. be very good a uh, series about Captain Sulu. No, it, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, seven characters on the original series. Right? Okay. Kirk, the captain, the lead. Spock, first officer, second lead. Dr. McCoy became very important. He wasn't at first. Yeah. But the writers loved the relationship yeah, yeah. and wrote him, Scotty, beam me up. Okay, so you have three left. Three left. You have Sulu, Uhura, and, and Chekhov. Chekhov. And Chekhov only came in during the, the second the season. season. At best, at best, Sulu would have been the fifth most important character on the show. Okay. You do not create a series for the fifth character <laughs> on an episode. And Sulu was never that huge a character, not like Spock became, not like McCoy became. Uh, you wouldn't do one about Uhura, you wouldn't do one about Chekhov. So that was not going to happen. And George, in his mm, insanity, believed that the <laughs> Don't episode. Say that. Don't I love say George. It. Yeah. Uh, you are very friends. <laughs> oh, no, we're friends. We're friends. Um, when they made the episode on Voyager, where flashback, we flashback. see. Um, Sulu again as captain of the Excelsior, but it, it was an episode about Tuvok. Yeah, it wasn't an episode about <laughs> Sulu, but George was convinced that it was a uh, pilot for a new series about Captain Sulu. And I talked to everybody at the studio, and they said, "No, <laughs> no. that's not what we're making." No, and he he was telling the fans to write in, you know, this campaign to start the Captain Sulu series, and it just went nowhere, because it was never going to happen. But he was fantastic here in it's Brazil. Huh? In Brazil, oh, yeah, he no, was fantastic. He's a great guest. He's a great, he's a great guest, guest in this yeah. stage. He's the best one. He's fantastic. And hey, who knows about the future? <laughs> oh, who knows? Who knows? Well, the people with the money at Paramount, no. <laughs> 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 Nothing happens without them giving the green light, you yeah. know. The, yeah, and, and that wasn't going to happen. Unless George came to them and said, here's a hundred million dollars, make a show about me. Then they would have made Make it. me a show. <laughs> yeah, make me a show. Exactly. Let's change the, 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 the century. Uh, what your opinion or appreciation about Discovery. 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 Okay, thank you for having me. <laughs> Actually, Luis, I think we can do a special episode just about him and Discovery. Because I guess it's yeah. going to be long. So, well, okay. stay tuned for the next episode. No, no, no. I'll, I'll answer the question. No? Okay.